This is Jeffrey Cameron Surrigan, and I'm going to read more of The Great Adventures of Angelica Cherryfer, Quercus Menorah, and the Eight Elemental Stones, Book One. I'm just going to get back to where we were left off last time. On page eight. John Pierre and Angelica's other personal guard, Marcus Finnegan, followed her aboard armed from head to toe in infantry gear. The captain of the ship was standing on the deck in front of her, waiting for her arrival. He bowed deeply, saying, Welcome aboard. My name is Vega Skip Rindell, and I am the captain of the Rindell Sky Cruiser Prime. I am also the royal steward. It's my honor to serve you in whatever way you see fit, and I will do my best to protect you during your voyage. Angelica had never met a ship's captain before. Pleased to meet you, Captain Vega Skiprindel, she said as she curtsied, curtsied excitedly. I gl- gladly accept your company and your aid in my journey. Captain Vega replied, It would do to get you acquainted with the crew. I would like you to come to the ship's galley for breakfast. There, we will dine at the finest table in the skies and have a party in your honor before we lift anchor. The captain and the princess walked side by side towards the stairway that led down into the galley, and John and Marcus followed. You know, the two of you are also invited to eat with us, the captain called back to them with a robust chuckle. The guards stopped abruptly, out of surprise, and then smiled as they followed Angelica and the captain the rest of the way into the galley. Neither of them had expected the invitation. When the door to the galley opened, a rich array of aromas poured through. Angelica was also pleasantly surprised by the smell of food within. A lively chorus of music greeted the three guests as they entered the galley. Swell place, isn't it? said the cap- Captain Vega with a grin, as he led the two guards to a corner booth with velvet seats. After that, he led Angelica to a round table laden with nuts and fruit, with an aromatic curry that smelled of many different spices, yet also carried a sweet scent. He offered her orange juice, and she gladly accepted it. Soon after they started eating their food, a man dressed in white came with a trolley out into the dining room. On the bottom rack, there was a sun-roasted almond, and on the top rack, there was a cake. I've never seen a real strawberry before, Angelica blurted out excitedly, forgetting her manners. For Her Royal Highness's birthday, imported from Malus Prima, said the man with the trolley. I am Fergus Pineson, head chef of the Rindell Sky Cruiser Prime, he said, bowing lowly to Angelica. The best chef a squirrel could ever ask for, the entire crew cheered. Angelica giggled, rose, and curtsied to the chef. The busboy couldn't help staring at Angelica as he tried to concentrate, scurrying to and from the dish room. There had never been such a guest while he was on the crew. In the corner of the dining hall, Angelica took note of a mysterious hooded figure sitting quietly, sipping on rich acorn ale from the keg on the countertop. His unusual appearance caused a fleeting, fleeting sense of curiosity. Her distractedness ended when the captain called out, Here's a toast to the princess of our kingdom, to her health and prosperity. The men of the crew all raised their fists in agreement and echoed the captain's toast. After finishing breakfast, the captain invited Angelica to come along on a tour of the ship, and then to set a course for where to go first. Tradition needed only that the air in question would travel through all the lands in the world, but all of, any other details considering, concerning the voyage were for the heir taking the right of passage to decide. John Pierre noticed Angelica and Vega leaving the galley and decided to go with them, just in case. The captain led them to the quarter deck, from where they looked down onto the source of the ship's power. Captain Vega explained, This is a fulgur stone. Pure, concentrated electrical energy created it and it can endlessly generate power. According to my knowledge, there are a few of them... There are a few of them which are anywhere near this size. 
for the method required in obtaining them is difficult. Back when this ship was referred to as the Rindell Seafarer, I traveled the seas twice over on it before we acquired this stone and utilized its power to bring our vessel into the sky. The stone's size dictates the maximum electrical power it can produce. One of any smaller size couldn't lift our ship into the air. You say you know of others this size? Angelica uh, asked Angelica curiously. Yes, said the cap. The captain responded. Near here, there is a village which uses the power of one. I will show it to you on the map in my quarters. Perhaps we should go there now. Angelica nodded. John, Pierre, and Angelica turned around as the captain climbed up the stairs to them and walked over to the captain's quarters. Please come inside, Captain Vega beckoned as they opened the door for them. They gladly followed him in, and he stepped over to his drawing table and rolled out a map. First, Captain Point Vega pointed at the castle near the shore of, on the southwest side of the map and said, Here is where we are now, at Rubra of Agrifolia. Over to the east, here is Oakfeather, the village which I spoke of when we were out on the quarterdeck. It's in the center of the evergreen forest. The Fulgur Stone, which emits electricity, is one of eight elemental stones that exist in Quercus Menorah. Oakfeather has one as well. Oakfeather is famous, however, for another elemental stone. In the evergreen forest, the stone of light, Luminor, grows in great quantity, and the citizens of Oakfeather have long harvested it. The great Oak Village is known well for its brightly lit halls. He began to move his hands eastwards, eastward and then around as he pointed at several locations on the map while continuing. To the east of the forest are the three great springs. One of the two rivers emerging from there flows southeast to the kingdom of Anura, where the frogmen reside within the Aqua Gem Lake. Northwest of the springs is the village of Pistache. To the northeast of Pistache lie the burning sands, and north of all these are the cas cascading Frost Peak Mountains. I would like to visit the village of Oakfeather first, Angelica said to the captain, and I think I want to try to collect one of each of these elemental stones before we leave Quercus Menorah to go to another continent. What a splendidly wise decision, Your Highness. Let's, let us head to Oakfeather at once, he replied. I must warn you that it will not be an easy task to abstain, obtain every stone. That is especially the case in acquiring a ful fulgur stone. But I think there is someone in Oakfeather who can help us with that. Either way, we have quite a journey ahead of us. I will have the anchor lifted with haste. The three of them left the captain's quarters, and they climbed downstairs onto the gun deck, where the captain ordered one of the shipmates to lift anchor. These are fine men who work this ship, said Captain Vega. I've never seen a better crew, if I do say so myself. He walked the princess through to the stairs that led down to the hold of the ship. Cool air whisked past Angelica as she stepped inside. Captain Vega told Angelica, down here, we will keep all the necessities and supplies that His Majesty the King has given us for you, and any other provisions that you pick up along the way. Should you choose to walk for any part of the journey, we will support you from the sky and come to your aid whenever you need. Contact me if we are apart, but you need us to come. Handing her an odd-looking object that resembled a jumble of stones tied together to the end of a, at the end of a stick, he... Uh, said, This is a transceiver, 